Sarah Felcher, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Awesome. Thank you. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you today. We've been preparing for this for a while, and we finally have a chance to chat and you know sit down and really uh, discuss more about you and your business and some of the cool things that you're uh, involved with currently. We're going to be focusing our conversation on utilizing a virtual business manager, and this in relation to your company, Virtual Desk, uh, based in St. Louis. Um, as we get st started, I wanted to share Sarah's bio with everybody. Sarah Felcher is the founder of Virtual Desk based in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. She started her journey in the business world over 10 years ago as a healthcare administration professional. She left her corporate job to pursue her interest in starting a company. She wanted to ensure that her daily work helped and guided others to reach their goals. That is how Virtual Desk came into reality. And uh, I imagine you could tell us more, much more about Virtual Desk. Um, but before we go there, anything else about yourself, your background that you would like to share with listeners by way of your background or uh, context, you know, contextualizing our conversation today? Yeah, so as you mentioned, I started um, in healthcare. So I've worked full-time since I was a teenager and I was lucky enough right out of high school to start working in the healthcare world. And, um, you know, I worked in that industry for quite a few years. I ran large assisted living communities. And after a while, I just wanted to do my own thing and start my own business. And I had already been kind of helping people on the side. And I thought, you know what, I need to make this full time. So I went after it. And that's why I'm here today to talk about that. Um, I come from a very working class background. So I like to say that if I can do it, anyone can make it happen as well. I love that. Uh, always uh, great to have a good can-do attitude and to to take the bull by the horns and really just run with your passions. And Definitely. and so I, I really uh, am excited to to dig into this. So tell us a little bit more uh, about Virtual Desk, like the origins of it, um, and then you know a little bit more specifically about what you do. And then we can talk more generically about you know how to utilize. Uh, these types of services in organizations, leveraging them and utilizing them to, to help drive organizational success? Yeah, well, Virtual Desk was founded on the idea of helping other business owners succeed. That was something I was really passionate about. I wanted to make sure that my work every day was helping people in their life in some way. And for me, um, starting a business and going after those dreams of yours was, has always been a passion of mine. So I wanted to help other people with that passion. And really, the services that we offer are just day-to-day -day operation type services. So anything that you would have a, a virtual business manager, you know, an office manager, an administrative assistant doing, that those are the services that we offer. And the goal behind that is that no matter what size business you are or what stage that you're in, you can get the type of help that you need now without having to hire a full-time person or somebody you know, who has to physically be at that location every day. So it cuts your cost, but it also still gives you the support that you need. Yeah, I think that's great. And it's it's a really important thing as we think about growing and scaling a, a business, a new, a particularly a new entrepreneurial endeavor. Um, you know, you want to keep overhead low. You don't want to overcommit either in terms of the the physical costs, the, the fixed costs of a physical office space exactly. or, you know, a, a salaried um, and benefits receiving yeah. employee, uh, that can be, you know, really hard to, to scale. And so this allows you, the, these types of services allow you to incrementally, incrementally scale um, in sustainable ways over time until you, you know, you get to the point where you decide, yeah, I really do need to pull the trigger, hire, you know, that full-time person myself. Um, but there's a lot in between when you're starting out and then you're scaling Definitely. and growing. It, ta it takes a while to get to that point where you're really justified in getting that new person. The other thing that you mentioned that I think, you know, I think we've all been living this past 15, 16 months is that virtual work, uh, virtual teams can be very, quite very effective, um, more than I think many people even thought a year and a half ago, right? Um Definitely. You, don't, you don't need that person sitting in the, at the desk at, at, in a physical space um, right next to you or in this vicinity of you in order to, to have effective collaborations and to get stuff done. And so that's you know where so you, your company and others like yours come in. They can offer those services, help people scale, keep you know the fixed and overhead costs low, uh, and ultimately 
you know, more of a kind of a just in time uh, service model to, to, yeah. to get those administrative uh, tasks done. That was exactly the goal behind it. So I knew during COVID that, you know, it hit our local area hard. A lot of local businesses were struggling and a lot of them had to either, you know, temporarily or permanently close doors. And a lot of the struggle now that they are reopening is just finding other people to help. There are, you know, there are people who are looking for jobs, but there are so many right now that people are having a hard time filling those positions. And so that's once again, one of those situations where services like this do come in so handy and it's because you can use them only as you need to so you don't have to worry about guaranteeing a person at least 10 hours or 20 hours whatever you know a month that you say you can just say hey this week I only need you for this one thing it's an hour and I won't bother you <laughs> next week I'm going to need you for 10 hours and I'm going to need you to do all of these things for me so that's where it can come in really handy and I think during COVID definitely it taught people that you don't have to have somebody e there or even in your same city you can really focus on someone's qualifications and how well they can help you instead of their location which I think is fantastic yeah absolutely it, it is very um very helpful uh, and, and to, to do it in a way that's really unique and spe specific to your organization, to the needs that you have in the present moment and, and the ebbs and flows of those needs, right? Um, yeah, exactly. So you've already mentioned a couple examples, but maybe uh, we could flesh out additional examples of the types of things that it would be helpful to outsource to a virtual business manager. Yeah, definitely. So a lot of the big ones that I see um, for a lot of solopreneurs are really, really small businesses are assistance with social media, um, bookkeeping, email management, document items. So just typing, say they have a set contract. They don't want to have to go in every time and change all those little details every time they need to send that contract out. So instead, what they do is we hold that contract for them. They send us the changes or the information and we you know, make those changes, send it back to them or reach out to that client directly for them. It just depends on how, you know, our relationship is at that time. But that's a really great way to outsource, like you said, day-to-day -day items that either you hate, you just don't have time to do, or you're not good at. And instead of trying to force yourself to learn it and do that work, you can just bring someone in who is already good at it and who can understand your business and kind of take over that little piece for you. So you can spend that time doing the things that you're good at, such as generating new leads or out there marketing with other business owners. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I, there's lots of things I'm good at, but there's lots of things I'm not good at. And to take the analogy out of, you know, the workplace for a moment, just at home, I'm not a fix it kind of person. So if there's a plumbing issue or there's an electrical issue, um, there was a time when I would try to, to fi fix it myself. And you can learn anything on YouTube. And so I'd watch hours of YouTube videos and I'd go back and forth between Lowe's and Home Depot, you know, and, and trying to find stuff. I, I end up spending hours to do something that I'm not good at, um, that I'm probably never going to do again because it's kind of one of those weird random things. And, and ultimately I usually don't do it well. And, and so it comes out worse than, and I have to call someone to come fix what I tried to fix. Right. Um, we yeah. do that in the business setting all the time. So having these types of resources to outsource to people who actually have the talents, the skills, the competencies and capabilities to do. And ultimately it's probably going to save you a lot of money, uh, because you're not wasting resources on all of those things that, that you or someone on your team isn't uh, particularly skilled at. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I, I understand, true. you know, sometimes people are a little hesitant to, to outsource or to, to hire services like yours. And I understand it's not always a fit for everyone. Uh, but, you know, I, I think a lot of times, especially if we find ourselves spinning our wheels on things that we don't enjoy, that we're not very good at, we, we probably need to take a hard second look. Definitely. And I always encourage people as well, even when they're talking with me about signing up for services, I encourage them to talk to as many people as they can and really dig deep on those questions. Because I think a key to any virtual assistant or business manager, really anyone who's part of a virtual team, is knowing that they are a good fit for you. So make sure you ask those questions, you know, ask for examples of work. Don't just take 
pictures, you know, tell them you want to see live sites that you're working on and you want to see live social medias, um, not just still pictures because you never know exactly how that, you know, has carried on from there. So ask the questions, you know, request proof of their licensure, make sure that everything is above board. That way, when you started on this journey with someone, you are already starting off on a confident foot to where you're giving them the best foot forward as well and giving them a, a really good chance to succeed at your expectations. If not, then it's just liable to really fail. And it could be that it's neither side is in the wrong. It was just not a good fit from the beginning. Yeah, and the fit piece is is really important. Um, I I hear you. You're not suggesting a one size fits all approach. In fact, that's the exact opposite of what I'm hearing. You know that everything is tailored. Everything is very specific to the needs of the organization to the particular client that you're working with. So, yeah. I, I not just in relation to virtual office management, but in, in in so many other ways. You know, we're we're kind of in the renaissance of the gig economy, the virtual and distributed workforce, um, the, and there are so many people that want to do this type of work where they don't necessarily want to be tied to one specific organization, um, but yeah. they they would rather you know, rather than doing 50 things, you know, for an organization, only two or three of which they actually enjoy or are good at, um, they'd rather do the things that they're good at, that they enjoy doing, and just do those um, for many organizations. Yeah. And and I think that's a, that's a great thing. And so, um, you know, we, it's it's a good opportunity for, for the organizations we reach out to to help with these types of services, the people that work for them. Um, of course, it helps with economies of scale for us as well. Um, it really can uh, and really should be seen, I think, as a, a win-win kind of a situation for everyone. And, you know, that's that's why I think um, your organization exists and, and, and why uh, we're talking about it today. Um, yeah. Per perhaps uh, you could t tell us a little bit more about how you try, to, you've already addressed this a little bit, but how you try to make sure that fit is there, that um, you want to make sure that, your partner agencies, those organizations uh, make sense as both a client, but also that you to them, um, someone that they really can work for, work with in, in the long run. Yeah, definitely. So I always say just to start, um, when you put out a notice or that post that you're looking for some assistance, you tend to get tons of responses. So definitely start wading through them, but have a set list of questions that you want to have answered and have a rough idea on how you expect those questions to be answered. That way, when you're putting those out there to people, if immediately their responses are just not at all in line with kind of what you were thinking or how you expect someone to handle the situation, then you, those are people you might want to go ahead and cross off the list right now and kind of thin them through. Then from there, when you're talking with people, pay attention to the ones who are offering advice and really giving you information without, you know, trying to pressure you into getting in a phone call or, you know, joining the services without really talking. Um, I think just having discussions back and forth are so important because that's going to show you who has the patience and who is trying to take the time to understand your business and your needs. Um, a huge red flag for me is someone who does not ask to see your website or any um, social media that you may have. Now, as a small business or someone who's just getting started, you may not have those, but if someone doesn't even ask to see them, to me, that is a huge red flag. They should want to see that. They need to get familiar with you and your business before they even start talking about how they may be able to truly help you. So that's the first one. Um, secondly, I would say, don't ignore feelings that you may be having. So if you're, say if you've been working with someone for a month or two and it just doesn't feel right, don't feel bad about that. That's part of business on our end is that sometimes clients aren't a good fit and they might not want to continue to work with you. So be honest with yourself. If you don't like the way things are going with that person, have a talk with them, give them a chance to maybe you know, fix that. Um, but if it's not working, then start once again, looking for someone else to work with who may be a better fit. Um, lastly, I would say pay attention to how they respond to you. Um, a lot of us are busy, you know, a lot of people who are doing this, they have a lot of people reaching out to them, but people should still be responding to you in good time and 
answering the questions that you put forward. So if you send over four questions and they answer one and ignore the other four, once again, that would be somebody I would be kind of thinking twice about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think those are, are great pointers, uh, not just in this context, but I think business in general, um, good things <laughs> to, to keep in mind as we're working with people. I like to give people the benefit of the doubt and you know try to work with people in good faith. Um, but that doesn't mean you can bury your head in the sand. And it doesn't mean that there won't be times things just aren't working or that people might even try to take advantage of you. So, so you, uh, yeah. you know, just stay aware, stay mindful and watchful, but also, you know, try, try to be with people in a way that gives them the benefit of the doubt and helps them know that, yeah, you, you are someone, um, that they can trust and, uh, you know, it can be a, 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 a mutual, ben mutually beneficial uh, business arrangement that's going to help everyone and that you can develop trust and accountability for each other. Yeah, it's definitely a two-way street. So you have to make sure that you're also putting your best foot forward and sharing the information that the other person will need to make sure they can do a good job too. So, you, you know, we have, you have to make sure that both sides are kind of coming to the table and are ready to work together. Sorry, <laughs> I'm having some computer issues. Um, I will, right. of course, I will, of course, edit all of this, and I'll make it sure it's all nice and clean. Um, good. So, so let's talk a little bit more about mindset now. You're an entrepreneur. You started a new organization um, to help other entrepreneurs. It's a dog eat dog dog world out there. We've just gone through a pandemic. Many small businesses have had to shut their doors. Um, just navigating everything is really tough. Yeah. How, how do you keep a strong mindset? How do you encourage and support others in maintaining a strong mindset while navigating all the messiness, the complexities of this entrepreneurial world that we're in? Yeah, um, I think my biggest motivator is always keeping sort of an end goal in mind. So I have my big end goal, um, but I'm also a big list planner. So I like to have that big goal always in mind, kind of always in the background, and then basically set myself up with um, checkpoints along the way where I can stop and evaluate kind of how far I've made it to that goal and what I need to keep doing or what I need to change. And I think for myself personally, that really helps me with my mindset because there is a lot going on in the world today and everyone's life is different and you never know what it's going to throw at you from day to day. So I think always kind of making sure that you're reevaluating those goals and kind of keeping a list of how you reach those goals is so important. That way, when life inevitably knocks you down a little bit and kind of throws you for a loop and you're running ragged for a couple of weeks, you can kind of go back to your list, take a look at it and get yourself right back into where you need to be to keep going. Um, and I really, really emphasize that to a lot of people. Um, pretty much anyone I work with, I we start with lists. We make a list and we start working on it. Um, but I think for people, it's it's always different on how they deal with that stress. For some people, they need to walk away from that list. They need to flip it over, <laughs> walk away, go, you know, watch TV, go for a bike ride, just sit there and enjoy a dinner and not think about business for a little bit. So it really depends on where you're at. But the key is finding something that helps you really cope with that stress and that sometimes that anxiety that just naturally comes with managing all of these things. Yeah. And I, I love the, the whole idea behind um, growth mindset, abundance mindset, recognizing that the challenges that we face, it's, it's cliche. We hear these things all the time. Um, but, but it's true. I mean, there's a reason why we repeat these, these notions over and over again, that it, it's either a stumbling block or it's a stepping stone, right? It's yes, you lean yes. forward, you fall, you, you fall forward, you fail fast, you, you iterate, you learn, you grow every, every setback that you have is an opportunity for, um, for really taking stock of yourself, you know, having that reflective moment and in finding either that you're going to gain resolve and continue forward or, Hey, maybe now it's a time to pivot, go in a different direction. Uh, most of the successes I've had in my life have come after a failure where I've been uh, really discouraged. I, you know, I, I just 
you know, I wanted this thing so badly, it didn't work out. And yeah. now all of a sudden though, I, because I was so focused on this thing, that's not going to happen. Now, all of a sudden my, the aperture of my, my vision, my understanding is open and I see, oh, look, now I can do these other things. And actually it turns out better. So I, I think yes. as long, as long as we can recognize, you know, the messiness that we're in and, and lean into that messiness and be willing to learn from the setbacks, I think so many wonderful things can happen. Definitely. Definitely. Never be afraid of a setback. Don't let it you know, beat you up completely. We'd all be lying if we said that it didn't get to us or we didn't have bad days. I have bad, I still have bad days all the time. But what you have to really focus on are those good days and those wins because the bad days are always going to come, but the good days are what kind of keep you motivated and keep you pushing for more. And just like you said, just learn from the bad days, pay attention to what's going on in those. And it'll also, it won't only, only help you with your business and learning where maybe you have some shortcomings, but it can also help you personally just kind of work through some of those stressors and that anxiety to where you come out a stronger person in the end, because you learn a new way to kind of deal with those feelings as, as you're inevitably forced to face them. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, Sarah, it has been a real pleasure talking with you today. I noticed Here. that we're getting close to the end of our time together. Um, before we close, though, I want to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about uh, your organization, anything else that you would like to share with us by way of final word on the topic for today. Yes. Yeah, so you can find me under virtual desk VA. So um, that is my Instagram handle, Facebook, uh, my website, a little bit of everything. Um, I also have a, the virtual table, uh, virtual desk round table podcast, which is a new podcast that I'm working on. So we have some new episodes coming out here pretty soon on that. Um, and as well as I have the virtual desk round table Facebook group where we do challenges. And I basically try and get you creative and really working on different aspects of your business. For example, right now we have our July social media challenge. So every day we're walking people through um, different ideas on what to post on their social media, just to kind of help you get that going. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sarah. It has been a real pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more more about uh, what Sarah and Virtual Desk can do for you. And, and really just think in general about uh, virtual business manager services and other ways that you can, uh, in a sustainable way, scale and grow your business. Um, as we kind of get into the post pandemic new, hopefully new normal, uh, we, we find our stride and, and can, uh, all find success in, in, uh, the coming year. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, and as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.